Hello again. Now you know a lot more about choosing a journal and about making sure you avoid those predatory publishers. We've come to the point when we're thinking about the peer review process itself and how to make the most of it. Hopefully you've had a chance to look at the example from F1000 Research that I suggested on the page and make your own notes about things that the author did well in responding to the reviewers. If not, take a bit of time now and go through it. Right, so we are going to be talking about the process of peer review from a really practical perspective. I have put together a short list of tips um, that look at it um, really from an applied point of view. I've not gone theoretical at all. I've taken these partly from my own practice, but mostly from talking to editors and reviewers. So I hope you'll find them useful. The first thing you'll often have to do when writing to an editor is to write a cover letter. This is a bit like the cover letter when you apply for a job. It's your chance to make a case for your paper and to make sure it's presented in the best possible light. So don't just repeat the abstract, don't just state what's in the paper, you really need to persuade the editor that it would be a really good choice for them to publish your paper. So for instance, situate it within your field. Talk about um, why it might be interesting, does it contribute to a particular debate, does it propose a new hypothesis, or perhaps support an existing hypothesis, or to support it. Um, make a case for why other researchers would be interested to read and cite your article. Also make sure you do your research and link it to the journal scope and explain why the particular readership of that journal will be interested in it. The first hurdle is what's called a desk rejection. This is when the editor rejects a paper without even sending it to peer reviewer. And ideally, with a bit of research and preparation, you should be able to avoid these most of the time. Rejections of this kind occur because the language is so difficult to understand that actually a proper peer review process can't happen, in which case you might need some editing services, or perhaps they detected plagiarism in the article. It might be that you haven't done your research and actually your article is not within the scope of that journal, or the format is wrong. For instance, word count is too long. Finally, you might have missed some crucial information that the reviewers would need in order to assess your work. Uh, for example, you might not have given enough detail on the methodology. As long as you've prepared the article properly and chosen the journal correctly, you should be able to get through this first stage and be sent to reviewers and in a certain time frame receive their comments back via the editor. At this point, you need to think about your response. Um, let's start with what to write, the structure of it. Usually you're going to start with a general paragraph where you thank the reviewers and the editor for your time. Now, sometimes you might not feel like thanking them. Sometimes they have been really critical of your work. Don't forget these are experts in the field who have taken their time to help you make the work as best as it can possibly be. So it is totally appropriate to thank them. And you might also want to, in very general terms, Line some of the big changes that you've made. Then we come to the real meat of the response. Every single comment that the reviewer made needs to be addressed, even the minor ones. So a good way of doing that is to interleaf. So copy a reviewer comment and then underneath in different font or color, add your own response, which might go somewhere like, they make a good point, we have changed the wording of that sentence to reflect the fact that blah, blah, blah. And it's often helpful to add a page and line number so that the editor can check the manuscript. Make sure you tell them whether you're referring to the new manuscript or the old manuscript when you're quoting line numbers. And in some cases, you might disagree with the reviewer. You might feel that they've misunderstood your point, which is fine. Bear in mind that if they misunderstood, it's likely your readers will too. So in those cases, it's often right to change your wording a little bit to clarify that point and then your comment to reflect that. Or you might really think that the reviewer has got the wrong end of the stick and they're incorrect. And that's okay. As long as you're not doing that for every single comment, there will be cases where it's appropriate for you to explain thoroughly and reasonably why you feel the reviewer's comment is not correct or why you don't feel it's appropriate to make that change. 
then it will be up to the editor to decide. Really spend some time on your response and improving the paper. This could require considerable rewriting, but you are doing so at the advice of experts and it will help make the paper better. And don't forget, the editor can still reject your article if they feel you haven't taken on board the reviewer's comments. So in terms of the tone of your response, always paramount to be polite. Unfortunately, there are still some reviewers who are not quite polite, who might be a bit sarcastic. Editors are stressing that constructive criticism is best, but some people still haven't taken that message on board. Whatever the reviewer has written, your professional responsibility is to be polite and constructive in your responses. Um, do write clearly and concisely. Remember, editors have hundreds of manuscripts to get through, lots and lots of them in a day, so and make their life as easy as possible. Um, write clearly, concisely, ask somebody else to check that what you've written makes sense and that it's appropriate, particularly other authors of the paper, the senior author, they might have a lot more experience than you at this process, so they'll be able to give you good feedback. And finally, it's usually a good idea to pause and redraft. I know there have been times when I've read the reviews and I felt really downhearted or I felt quite angry about them. So I've put them aside for a day or two and then come back to them when I was in better zero. And certainly, once you've drafted your response, it's often helpful, just like with any piece of writing, to set it aside for a day or two back to it to the final edit before you send it to the editor. So those are my short tips. Um, please feel free to let me know if you have any other thoughts that I can include in future, um, uh, in future sessions. And um, I hope you enjoy the rest of this uh, module and that you can join us again next week for the next module. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye.